everyone and welcome to the video tutorial series for learning how to use Tinkercad effectively in our classroom and using it to be able to create your own projects and your own 3D models to be 3D printed on our printers. So right now, this is Mr. Russo. I am one of the two STEM teachers that is going to be working with you and walking you through this video series. Myself, as well as Ms. Giordano will be popping in. You'll be hearing her voice throughout this video series. This specific one is broken down into five parts with part one being about using the work plane and manipulating items on the work plane. Part two is about how to view objects and be able to move them and manipulate them. Part three is about copy, duplicate, and grouping objects. Part four will be about how to rotate, resize, and align objects. And the final part of this will be about different short commands that we really do find very valuable in order to make your 3D modeling journey a little bit easier. So once you, uh, once you actually get your account from Mr. Giordano or myself, what you're going to do is you're going to first go to that page, which you can see right here. So I'm going to type in my nickname. So for this, the nickname I've created, which is tutorials, and I'm going to log in and you should have a page similar to this. The first project, since we are doing this together, and please make sure as you do this, you're creating all the same things that I am and you're following along in order to receive full credit for this. So we're going to click create your first 3D design. And then the top left, we're going to rename this to Tinkercad Tutorials number one. And in order to do this, in order to use the work plane, and that's what this is really all about, there's going to be different items I'm going to be telling you to drag into here and everything else. At the very end of our first tutorial, you're going to save this and so that you receive full credit for doing part one before you move on to part two. So. The first thing that we're going to be talking about here is the work plane. Our work plane is this particular area over here. Okay, This whole blue area that you actually see on your screen is basically where we can put items and manipulate them. We can see if they are above the work plane or below the work plane. And what that actually means is that if an object is below the work plane, that's an area that will not get printed by the 3D printer. This is the actual bed plate itself. This is where you'll actually find your items. So one of the things that we would want to do in the very beginning of this would be to make this work plane the same exact size as our current 3D printer. So in order to do that, the first thing that we are going to do, and I'm going to move this screen up a little bit so that you can kind of see the bottom. We're going to hit, we're going to go down here and we're going to go to our settings tab now our settings tab if you look down here will tell us that we can resize our entire work plane so that we can make it the size of our 3d printer now i'm not particularly familiar with millimeters so i'm gonna put this in inches and i know that our printer beds for our classroom are eight and a half inches wide and are a about six inches long so right here is our current printer bed that we have so to keep this easier once again so we can work with instead of having to work with fractions let's switch this units back from inches to millimeters it'll make our lives a lot easier with this so we switch that back now couple of things I want to tell you as we kind of work through this is if you look on the very middle and bottom of the screen you can see we're doing part one work plane when that name changes that will actually symbolize to you what part of the tutorial we're up to but more importantly on the bottom right you can actually see that as I was moving things around and as I grab with my mouse you can actually see that the mouse on the bottom right is lighting up as well as any buttons that I would press on my keyboard you'll see them light up as well that is done so that as you follow along, if you don't know particularly what button I was pressing, you can always pause the video, go back through, and you can stop it in order to see what I was pressing so that you could do this. I will do my absolute best to explain this as I do it step by step, but if you need that reference, that is there for you. So now that we've adjusted the snap grid so that I can have my work plane the size that I wanted to, I'm just going to readjust this so that it takes up our whole screen. Okay. 
So getting started. So the first thing I want to do when taking a look at the work plane and adding objects in is if you look on the right here, there are all different types of objects that you could kind of drag directly into your work plane and you could view them and see them and everything else. But what we're going to do for our first object is we're going to be going over here where it says basic shapes and we're going to click design starters. Once we click design starters, we're looking for a very specific item. So we're going to hit more shapes and scroll down, keep hitting that, scroll down, keep hitting that. And this is what we're looking for right here. It's called the view it cube. Take that and with your left click of your mouse, drag it into the center of your work plane. And this is what we're going to be using for this first tutorial. So if you look with my right side of my mouse, what I can do is as I drag this around, I can actually see all around this object. So I can see this is the front side, this is the right side, the back, the left, that's the top, the bottom, right? I'm, I'm going all around my work plane. So let's say this cube in particular, right? What size is it? If I click the object and I click these little buttons, right, I could see that this is 21 by 21, so the length and width, and the height of it, 21. Now let's pretend you don't know millimeters. You don't know what 21 millimeters is, right? So you're like, you know what, Mr. Russo, I really need to know what this is in inches because I have a ruler in my classroom and I can measure with the ruler. Well, we did this actually earlier. Come down here to your settings page. You're going to click here and you're going to change this back over the inches. Once you do that, and we click on the object, now we can see what size it is. So it says it's 0.827 by 0.827 by 0.827. Let's say that we want to make this cube a perfect square. We want to make it one inch all around. So we can click here, type in one by one, and then for the very top, for the height, by one. Now by doing this, this cube should perfectly fit within this grid point right here. So let me see if I drag this over, does it fit? It does. It perfectly fits in the center. Now there's a couple of, di of ways to take this object and manipulate it even more. You can see when I click this object, there's a area over here that pops up. So this is called the settings window. So the settings window allows you to take a solid object and you could make it any color you'd want as well as you could leave it multicolor. So if I leave multicolor on, you can see that I have white, red, and green. If I turn it off, it's just a red object or a yellow object or a green object. Um, the other option here is you could actually make it transparent and you would only do this temporarily so that you could see through the object if you were working on it. But because if you tried to leave it transparent and you went to print it, well, you're not really printing anything. But there's a secondary option here, which is a hole. So if you look at the hole, you can actually see that there are lines through here. Holes are generally used for cutting shapes. They're not used for kind of printing or anything, but we will get to that later on um, when we start talking about grouping objects and duplicating objects in part three of this tutorial series. So that's about everything you need to know about this particular part of our tutorial. The only last thing that I would like to mention to you is on this right hand side, when you see that there are basic shapes that you can use. So like, for example, if I wanted to make this a house, I could drag this on top and I could make a little, <laughs> I could make a little house out of this. I could move this over using my arrow keys. And let's say I want to make that roof of that house red. The other thing I could do is you could see that there's one called text here, okay? The text is basically how, see how they got those words front? You can actually click over here and you can type in whatever you would like and you can actually go in and change the font type. And you can change how tall or short it is. The bevel over here will actually make it a little bit thinner or wider if you want. And the segments will actually make the object a little more rounded at the edge.
edges. And then you could kind of make it however you want. There are always different types of shapes and different things you can do in here. And it's a really, really, really good idea in order to play with the basic shapes area to find different items that you could use within your project. Before you start going out there and trying to reinvent the wheel, the search function here might find you more than you, than you think. Now before we end off for today, we need to be able to save all of the things that we've created in here, as yours should look like this. The way you're going to do this, it's very simple, is on the top left you're going to click this icon, Tinkercad Dashboard, and when you click right here, on the bottom left you should have seen it said Saving Work, and there it is, Tinkercad Tutorials number one. All right, that does it with me. Um, Miss G is going to be coming on here in order to walk you through part two, which is how to view objects and be able to move objects.